Hello, this is Reiko here with Anime Location. We're interviewing Rob Mungo. Thank you. It's good to be here. Oh, wonderful. So, we're going to start off with the questions. How did you get into the world of voice acting? Um, well, I do stand-up comedy by trade. And I was at a, uh, a performance in Houston, Texas, when uh, one of the founders of AD Vision came to see my show. And after the show, he said, hey, I think you'd be good at doing voice acting. So I started with him. That was in 1994, and I've been doing it uh, 21 years now, ever since. So. Oh, awesome. And how are you enjoying your time in Ohio and at OhioCon? Um, this is my first time to Ohio. Uh, and first time to Columbus, and uh, I'm having a great time. There's a lot of people, everybody's having a great time. I've enjoyed it. Awesome. So you have to have a good story or two about your first, being the first to the ADV films, right? Um, well, I've done hundreds of titles for them. Um, and one of the, you know, I've been, you know, some, some one of the, the, my favorite things I ever did was for a show called uh, Super Milk Chan. Mm -hmm. Where there was a director named Stephen Foster, and he and he and I, the character I do is almost a direct impersonation of him, because mm -hmm. he would be asking me, "All right, now you need to talk like this," and I said, "I need to talk like this," and he goes, "Yes, mm -hmm. I went bigger, bigger, and I went bigger, bigger, and I said, you know, you can actually just do this yourself. You don't have to pay me because I'm doing an impression of you for this <laughs> entire this entire episode. You could have saved the money, but uh, but he, he didn't, and, and I did it, and, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Awesome. So." Over 200 titles. What does that milestone mean to you? Uh, well, it means I'm making money, so that's mm -hmm. nice. <laughs> yeah, um, and it means that uh, anime is still very big and it's still very popular, and I'm happy to be a part of it. It's a it's a thrill to come out here and meet the fans, and to be working on different projects and to be able to do different voices. And it's afforded me uh, opportunity to come to here and come to places like this con and other cons, and mm -hmm. I'm I'm just proud to be a part of it. Awesome. So let's see. Tell us about your stand-up, and does that help you with your voice acting? Um, my stand-up is a, a little different. It's a it's a lot dirtier, I guess. So with some animes, it helps. <laughs> uh, I don't really have a filter when it comes to the stand-up. You can't really do it at stuff like this. Um, but uh, it's two different worlds, and I have I. I I don't know. Maybe it might help me subconsciously. I don't know. I don't know that I've ever deliberately sat out to see if it did, but I don't know. There's two different worlds, and uh, but so it's no comparison. not really, not really. It's uh, what I, what I do in the in the nightclubs, in the smoking nightclubs at night, and in and in uh, the booth are two different things. So let's see. Okay, so. You, and also in the radio business. Wow. So that probably translates to voice acting very well? Yeah, it did. Uh, I did radio for a number of years. I worked as a disc jockey when I was in college. And uh, I got out of that and got into stand-up. And then uh, I've done radio shows, uh, doing different talk shows and stuff like that for a number of years. Uh, it doesn't really translate because what you do in anime is more acting. And it has, it has, it's, it's a different muscle, I guess, than it was would be in radio. But it's, it's still talking into a microphone. Stand up, radio, anime. I'm just talking to a microphone. I'm just doing it in different ways. So that's about it. And then, tell us about your role as one of the founding members of the group, the Whiskey Brothers. Uh, the Whiskey Brothers, I founded in 1998, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, it was a, it's a collective of comedians who are a little dirtier, who are a little bit more out there. And we just wanted to have these raunchy, fun nights where we just don't care and we're going to go out there and talk about stuff. It's not Sunday school. That's what we always say. It's the opposite of Sunday school. And so we go out there and we have a great time. And then that translated from doing the live shows into a podcast. Now we do a weekly podcast. It's at praisewhiskey.com and it's not safe for work. It's four. It's it's completely not. It's four comics. It's myself. It's Slade Ham, John Wesling, and Sam Damaris. And we sit around and we'll have another a bottle of whiskey and we'll talk about the different things we've seen in the world or different stories. And it's filthy and it's funny and it's it's like being it's like being in a room with a bunch of comics who are just having a good time. And now, luckily, we're shooting that we've had over three million downloads of that show of that show that we do every week. And that's afforded us the opportunity to record uh, a live stand-up television special. 
that we're shooting in February. And so we'll be doing, that's coming up, and we're going to shoot that special, and we're hoping to get that on the air in the next, uh, probably in the next six months. So. Awesome. And so what's your favorite whiskey? Well, um, I'm a Jack Daniels man. You know, that's the go-to. Um, we, one of the, the, the benefits of the show is we've never paid for a bottle of whiskey. We've always said that we want to have people donate whiskey to us. So we've gotten whiskeys from all over the world. All our listeners send us bottles or they'll, they'll pay for a bottle to have delivered from a distillery or whatever. So we've tried all kinds. The worst one was one from Canada. And it was called Texas something. It was a Canadian whiskey called Texas River or something. And it sounded, it tasted horror. It was like the blood, it was, it was the worst. It was sour. It was like, a, it was like a goat urinated in a bottle. It was, it was the foulest thing. We didn't even, you can't even get drunk on it because you can't stand the taste. And I've had Japanese, we had Habiki, we've had that on the show, and that was really good. It's a different kind of, it's, it's, it's one of the things where it's almost like, uh, it's like Chinese food here is not Chinese food in China, right? And Asian whiskey is not American whiskey. You know, you gotta get, it's, it's a different feel to it. It's a different, but you still get you, it'll get you drunk, and that's what's important. But it's, and I, the Habiki we got was actually very good. It was one, of, and it's one of our favorites. Yeah, the Japanese whiskey. So, how will your friends go about finding you on the internet and downloading? Oh, you know, they can go to. Uh, we have an app on iTunes. That's under the Whiskey Brothers. Uh, we also have a website called PraiseWhiskey.com. We had to do Praise Whiskey because some jug band in North Carolina called themselves the Whiskey Brothers before us. So we got PraiseWhiskey.com, but you can go there. And our first, we, we have over 300 episodes, but because our bandwidth was so high and we got a lot of downloads, we had to dump the first 200. They're off, they're not on that site. They're gonna be, you can find them later for like a fee, but PraiseWhiskey.com has the latest ones that come out every week.